Welcome, Daisy. So good to see you again. And I know um, I'd really like to learn a lot more about what you guys do at the uh, collective. Definitely. Well, um, at Blockchain for Social Justice, we focus in three specific areas. That is developer education. So making sure that folks from marginalized and traditionally underserved communities get access to proper blockchain developer courses and curriculum so they can also engage in that space because blockchain developers make good money, right? Um, second is investor education. Um, we're not investment advisors, but we do teach people what is blockchain, what is cryptocurrency, how to read white papers, how to get a wallet so that we can actually start closing the wealth gap in these communities as well. And lastly, we actually teach folks um, who work in nonprofit profit, uh, public service, politics, whatnot, actually how to build their own blockchain projects for certain social impact issues in our community. Wow, that's massive um, mission there you've got. <laughs> um, and I'm really interested in the fact that um, some people seem to think that um, anything for social good um, is not profitable. And someone just mentioned that to me, and I just wondered what your thoughts are on that, because I just gathered, of course, you would be trying to make a profit, I mean, if you're a business, right? Yeah, well, that's why we have like the social impact model, right? Um, social enterprise model, social impact bonds, things like opportunity zones to incentivize more focus into um, businesses and projects that actually are addressing a social mission while reaping benefits. So for folks who say, hey, um, you know, social impact can't be profitable, well, look at the whole entire social enterprise alliance. Look at um, the SOCAP network. They've Those folks have made billions of dollars and it's all on social impact. I think when we actually focus more on investing in social impact, we'll see the whole entire public, um, sorry, private sector change in terms of, you know, how they design business and all that kind of stuff. Because now we've, we're starting to see it's actually less profitable to be a traditional capitalist. And do you think the old um, charities would have um, contributed to this attitude that um, social good is not profitable? Yeah, honestly, I really do feel like the traditional nonprofit uh, model is a form of disenfranchisement, which is why I'm all about social enterprises. Um, but they do kind of establish like, hey, we're going to need money, grants, donations every year just to do these things. And wait, actually, how can you add a revenue generating stream onto that, right, so that you can become self-sustainable? Because then there's like this whole um, where they use philanthropy and foundations as like a tax haven, you know, to wash their money and whatnot. And then the organizations that do get that money, right, those are are some of the organizations that we call AstroTurf, meaning fake grassroots. They're not really doing the deeper work that needs to be done. Oh. Like, um, for example, give Red Cross. They got over, uh, what, a billion dollars for um, what happened in Haiti some years ago, and they only built five houses. Oh, my God. Right. Wow. Right. Yeah. So what happened to all that money, right? Yeah. I had a friend who used to work um, in China for uh, Care International, so I used to hear a lot about the underbelly of the whole charity thing. So um, tell me um, what you see at the moment as um, the focus of what, how, sorry, how the blockchain can actually help um, and make our lives better. Well, I will say um, for social enterprises, the main way in which blockchain can actually help us is really through developing our own token economics. Okay. That's really what I see being able to help us get out of this codependency with philanthropy in the nonprofit sector, and then also kind of like those damaging relationships in the private sector with investors. Right. Because on both sides, you're kind of beholden to producing certain outcomes that are detrimental to your organization and the population and community within which you serve and want to work with. Um, so blockchain can help us do that. Second is being able to decentralize systems, have more accountability for our foundations, local government, and businesses that are giving money. Okay, actually, how can we quantify the impact that you've had with the dollar amount? Because you're giving these orgs millions of dollars, but how many people are they really serving? What's really the impact, right? Um, and then lastly, um, what I think blockchain can really help us do is create a more stable global economy where we can have more trust, uh, more transparency, um, streamlined engagement, streamlined delivery, um, and we can really start to make global rapid change because we're in that space right now where we're going quantum. We have to actually really start thinking about, hey, how can we really accelerate our impact? That's another thing blockchain can do. It can help us accelerate impact. So instead of me 
starting an organization, you know, having to kind of go through the, the five year hoops and gems to be taken seriously and then getting the funds that I need only to be kind of have to dance with the devil and sign my soul yeah. off. <laughs> I can start my own blockchain. I can get my advisors, my community to support me. I can run a STO right, no longer ICOs, and I can fund my organization to do the things that I need to do, and I'm not beholden to anybody except the SEC and IRS. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess it's power back to the people, really, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> and where do you think we're heading? What's, where, what does the future look like as far as in, through your eyes? Well, I would say for here in America, it doesn't look too bright um, for the simple fact that all these different rules and regulations have stifled the industry. So now people are just taking their projects overseas, you know, and I was actually at a global blockchain um, summit in D.C. And a lot of the folks on the panel, um, they were talking about, you know, in their countries in Africa, mind you, Africa that we're talking about is the third world and whatnot. Mm. They can take a taxi and pay with crypto. Right. Look what wow. just happened in, um, I think, Venezuela or Colombia. The um, government stopped Uber from being able to, you know, um, take money out of people's bank accounts. They switched to cryptocurrency overnight, right? So the possibility is there. It's just we're really stifled in America because regulators don't understand. They're using an old school lens um, and a traditional, like, good old boys club lens to look at a technology that it's far beyond our understanding of what we can even do right now. Right. Well, hopefully um, someone will wake up and change that whole system. Thank you so much for coming, and I'm so looking forward to the panel tonight. Yeah, thank you so much for having us, and I'm excited to be on the panel as well. Great. Yeah.